Welcome to this playlist. This is a series of videos that are going to walk you through how to create an extremely glitched up and edited audio file in Ableton Live 8 using its built-in audio editing features, warp markers, and audio effects racks. When we're finished, you'll learn how to create this. So we're going to start out with a high quality piano loop that I've rendered out from Native Instruments Acoustic Piano. I've put a lot of reverb on it because that's going to be important for the technique we're using. Check it out. Now we're going to duplicate our clip so we can start editing with a new version. So we're going to select the clip and we're going to press Command D to create a new version. So. Uh, now we're going to right click on that, color it as a new version so it's easy to tell, and we're going to press Command L to set our loop brace to this selection and activate our looping function. Now we're going to start using some of Ableton's audio editing features to do some edits and glitch stuff up. So the first thing we're going to do is use Ableton's split clip function. Right now this whole loop here is one consolidated clip and if we do any edits to it, it happens to the entire clip. We want to use smaller pieces of that clip and to start to rearrange and edit them individually. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and select one of the piano notes with its reverb tail. And we're going to use Ableton's split clip function to separate it from the rest of the clip. So we can do that either by right clicking and selecting split or on the Mac by selecting command and E as a keyboard shortcut. So now what you can see is it's detached this from the rest of the clip. Now we're going to use command D, we're going to duplicate that and now we've got two versions of it. First thing we're going to start messing around with is the ability to reverse individual clips. So as we have this one selected, we can go down into the sample window here and you can see there's a button here that will reverse the clip. Basically creates a new version and reverses it. So if we go back and listen to that. We've already created kind of a reverse reverb. The volume of this edit that we've just done is a little too high. So again, with this selected, I'm going to go down into the sample window here, and I'm going to reduce the volume of our reversed clip. So it's a little bit less dramatic. And again, with this clip selected, I'm going to right click on it, and I am going to go into this. One thing actually to keep in mind is if you right click on the clips title bar here, you get a different menu than if you're right clicking in the actual audio window. So just be cognizant of that. You get different options when you're clicking down here. So right click down where the audio waveform actually shows and it'll give you the option to show fades. And in the fades, it allows me to actually cross fade between the two clips. So I'm going to test that out and see how that sounds. Now I'm going to use Ableton's duplicate function to be able to create some beat repeat style stutter effects. So I'm going to go to our next series of piano notes here and zoom right in. And I'm going to select a small piece of this, copy that, and then paste it and now I can move this around. And so one interesting shortcut um, again on the Mac is if you hold down the Option key, probably Alt on a PC, and click and drag, it creates a new version of it, which is a really handy editing tool. So I've created a couple of stutters into this piano note here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with their volume 
So effectively, we're having a crescendo of beat repeats into the main note. And I'm just going to do this visually so I can see what the amplitude of each one of the clips is. Let's have a quick listen to that. Now I've zoomed into a different part of my audio waveform here, and we're going to create some variations on this theme using a triplet grid. So we're going to switch from straight notes to using a triplet grid. So what we can do here is go up into the options menu and make sure triplet grid is selected. Or again on the Mac, we can hit command and three to toggle between them. Now we can use a interesting feature as well, which is narrow or widen grid. As you can see, these are very narrow grid lines here, and that's what we end up snapping to. And by pressing Command and 2, we can widen that grid, or by pressing Command and 1, we can narrow that grid. So I'm going to make the grid decently wide here, and I'm going to select a chunk, and I'm going to press Command D to duplicate it several times. That started to create the desired effect. Now I'm going to narrow the grid by one further point, and I'm going to select a smaller piece of the waveform, and I'm going to duplicate that several times. Now we have the effect that we're looking for. And on the way out, we're just going to reduce the volume of some of these clips to make a little bit of a fade out on our beat repeats. Perfect. Now we're going to take it one step further and start experimenting with Ableton's clip transpose function. So I've zoomed into another area of the audio waveform and I'm going to select and duplicate a piece of the reverb tail here. So I'm going to select this piece, I'm going to duplicate it twice, and I'm going to take this middle piece right here and I am going to transpose it up by five semitones. So we're getting a pitched effect. Now I'm going to use our reverse function and I'm going to reverse that into the next duplicate. Kind of a cool effect there. Now I'm going to move a little bit further along and I'm going to use a reverse reverb into this hit and I'm going to pitch the reverse reverb differently than this piano hit and I'm actually going to use the reverb from another hit. Just see how that sounds. So I'm going to scroll in right here and I'm going to use this reverb tail. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to move back. I'm going to paste it just before this hit. First thing I'm going to do is reverse it. I'm going to snug it right up into this one and now I'm going to pitch this one up by five semitones. Let's hear how that sounds. I'm just going to add a little crossfade there to fade nicely into it and I'm also going to increase the volume of this clip a little bit. We can get a bit more of a dramatic effect. Now it can be easy to go a little bit too far down the rabbit hole with this stuff and take it overboard. So you want to be sparse and tasteful with your edits and you want to alternate nicely between straight clean edits uh, or straight clean audio and the edited audio so you're not getting um, you're, so you're getting the contrast between the two. Let's listen to what we have so far. <laughs> 